I uh, assume everyone can hear me all right? Cool. Seems really loud to me up here. Um, so this is uh, Building Confidence in APIs with Postman. Uh, my name is John Ferris. I'm the Director of Front End Engineering at Atten Design Group. Um, Atten is a full service design strategy and development agency based out of Denver, Colorado. Um, we work with a lot of organizations um, that are doing really good work. Um, we like to think that we work with organizations that are really trying to make the world a better place. Um, and increasingly, um, our clients are coming to us with uh, ask for more like application uh, like websites, not just content publishing, but um, you know data visualization, more interactive and intuitive forms, uh, things that don't work um, very well necessarily or very efficiently with the standard like full page refresh uh, kind of site architecture. So we're doing a little bit more decoupled work um, and that requires using a lot of APIs. And me personally, I, I got into web development um, through design. I started uh, graphic design and I did do a little bit of schooling with actual computer science degree, but it wasn't visual enough for me. Um, and so I gravitated to the front end naturally because it's that, that mix of visual, kind of the art side, and actual programming. Um, so my experience was with JavaScript was more like making drop downs and animating things and a whole lot of action script and uh, flash interaction back in the day. Um, so the idea of actually you know, getting data through an API and doing authentication, those kind of things, that was really, really intimidating for me um, when I was getting into it. It just seemed like uh, a lot of pressure. You gotta get this right. Um, and so a few years ago, I found a tool um, called Postman. Uh, at the time, it was a Chrome app or a Chrome extension um, that you can use to actually test APIs. Can I get a show of hands of people that have actually used Postman? Cool, a lot of people, awesome. Um, of those people, who's actually used the, the native app? Cool, so yeah, the, um, traditionally Postman was a, it was a browser extension for Chrome and they've uh, released a native app um, that is just incredibly intuitive really useful, um, and the reason I wanted to, to share it with you today is like there was a lot of things, I just used Postman to like grab an API, like send a request, get the response back and view it. And I recently learned like there's so much more to it and there's so much more, like so many more features that I just didn't know about. Um, I got really excited, it felt very empowering, so I wanted to, to share that with you today. Um, and I want to do that in the context of uh, Contenta. Is everybody familiar with the Contenta distribution for Drupal? Um, anyone not? Cool. So it's, Contenta is basically, it's a distribution made for API first Drupal development. So it has a lot of things turned off like, um, you know, there's, there's not really a front end or like blocks per se. It's really designed just to um, allow you to model your content and expose that as APIs. Um, so it has a lot of functionality like uh, simple OAuth built into it, uh, JSON API, which we're gonna talk about, um, and GraphQL, which I've never used, so you can ask me a question and I won't answer it or tell you where to Google it, I guess. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about JSON API. If you're not familiar with JSON API, um, yes, it is a module for Drupal, but JSON API is actually a specification for sending requests to a server um, and getting responses back. So the specification outlines like 
Um, basically, if you were sending a JSON request or a JSON body in a request to a server, it's formatted in a very specific way. Um, you know, how you filter is um, fairly prescribed, uh, how you sort, and those kind of things. Um, and then the response, the shape of that data as it comes back is um, all on the specification. And there's really two big advantages, in my mind at least, uh, for the specification. Uh, the first is you don't have to spend a bunch of time like architecting what your API is gonna look like. Um, JSON API, basically it's everything is entity formatted, so, or entity based, so you have specific endpoints for a resource, um, you can fetch those resources, you can post them, um, you can get collections back. Um, and that maps really well with, with Drupal. So if you think of you know, a node as an entity um, or a taxonomy term as an entity, uh, that maps really well to JSON API. So you don't have to spend time arguing over like, you know, what, what's the shape of this data? Like, what is the endpoint we're gonna to post to? What, what are we gonna get back? Um, and then the other big advantage, because it's a, a specification, that allows us to make tools that make assumptions about you know, what that shape, the shape of the data should be. Um, so we don't have to write a lot of boilerplate code in order to um, you know, fetch a node from Drupal, per se. Um, so we're gonna, the examples we're gonna look at in Postman are, are all gonna be based on JSON API, the JSON API module. Um, as I say here, highly encourage you to actually read the spec. Um, it's, a, it's a 30, 40 minute read and I'm a really slow reader. Uh, also, once you're done with that, there's really good modules, or really good documentation for the module itself. So it's definitely worth the time reading those. It'll save you a bunch of time. Um, yeah, do that. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about APIs in general. It sounds like just based on the hands of people in the room that have used Postman, you know what uh, a REST API is. But essentially we are just sending a, a request just like you would for an image or an HTML page. You're sending a request for data. So you send that to the server and you get a response back. Um, those responses have status code, so you're familiar with uh, 200, you know, everything worked. It's usually a good sign. Uh, 201 created, so if you're actually posting a new entity to the server, um, in our examples coming up, we're gonna post a recipe uh, to the server, and if it works successfully, we'll get a 201 uh, status code. Uh, 301 moved permanently, 403 forbidden, so if you don't have, you're not authenticated to, to get a resource. 404 not found, you probably put the wrong URL in. Uh, 418, I'm a teapot. If you send a request to a teapot trying to make coffee, you're gonna get the 418, I'm a teapot response. There's also a spec for that. Google it, I'm not lying. Um, but the general, the general idea is the 100 responses are hold on. Uh, two, here you go, everything's working well. Three, go away. Uh, 400, you screwed up. 500, I screwed up. Usually when you get the white screen of death, that's in the 500s. Um, so let's actually send some requests. Okay, so here's the, here's the Postman interface. Um, Postman has a concept of workspaces, so you can switch. Um, usually I'll have a workspace set up for like a, uh, a different project that I'm working on. Um, and then you have collections here on the side. So collections are just groups of requests. Um, and then within those, you can, I don't have any here, but you can, you can um, you know, organize those in folders as well. Um, so in this example, can everyone see that all right? Is it big enough? I need to zoom in. No. Cool. Um, so here's, I've got, a, I've got a local instance of Contenta running. Um, 
its namespace with this uh, API path, and I want to get recipes. So I send that. I should get a whole list of recipes back. Um, and this is the, the JSON API format. You get, if everything goes correctly, you get one um, object. And inside of that, it's got a property called data, um, or it must have the property data. If it's a collection, like you're getting a group of entities, in this case, we want all the recipes. Uh, we didn't specify any filtering or anything. So it's gonna send back an array. Even if it's just one, it'll send back an array because uh, we're getting a collection. Um, so yeah, we just have a bunch of entities and you'll see that there's a lot of, a lot of data here. Um, <clears throat> in a lot of cases, when, you're, when you just wanna show a list of recipes, you don't necessarily need all that data. You don't, you don't need the created date. You might not need if it's published or not. Um, you don't need the user ID. So we'll look at, at ways to, to just get what you need there. Um, so Postman allows for URL parameters. So in this case, uh, we want to get a specific um, recipe. So we know the UUID for that. And if we just hit params, you can see I already have it defined. I've got one of the UUIDs for a recipe. And we send that. And in that response, um, you notice that now this is an object. So we just get one single, single entity. It's a recipe, basically all the same information that we had before. It's just now uh, a single entity. So it's an, uh, an object. Uh, categories or taxonomy terms, we can send those, get those, and yep, it's what you might expect. It's categories, a bunch of field data. Um, now, JSON API allows you to, you know, filter those, those queries, get specific fields. Um, so first, I'll turn on the sort parameter. This is one thing I really like about Postman, is you can load a bunch of test query parameters up um, in here and just enable and disable and delete them as you need. So you don't have to worry about, like, always going back and copying and pasting things in. You can just disable specific parameters. Uh, so we'll send that, and it should be sorted by name. So we have main course. Uh, let's see. It's kind of hard to scroll through this, right? Because there's a lot of information that we don't need. Um, so JSON API has this idea of sparse field sets, um, which lets you define what fields you want back. So really all we're interested in is the name for our hypothetical purposes. Um, so if I send that, now I mainly just get the name attribute. I don't have the created or the published or anything like that. It makes for a smaller request, um, easier to look at, a um, little more efficient in, in terms of what you're downloading from the server. So now we can see that um, these are indeed sorted by name. Cool. And you can actually get pretty complicated with this. Um, so here I've got um, searching for recipes. I want the title and the category. Again, using sparse field sets. Again, we're going to sort by title. But now I've got this new parameter called include. Um, and include allows us to include any of the other entities that are being referenced. So. In this case, if we run this, oh, and I also, I limited it by only two resources, so all these are pag paginated. I believe the default is 50. Is that right, Gabe? Thanks, he's paying attention. Um, so I'm limiting by 50, and also for the categories, I only want the name. So with this syntax, we can say fields, Categories only give me the name. So let's see what that looks like. Um, 
Sorry, my little scroll target is really tiny. Um, so here we have recipes, and we have these relationships. So in the category, um, the data is, so this is in the category, 91F073EF, yada, yada, yada. It's not very useful um, to humans anyway. But we have included that. So if I collapse this, we now have an included parameter. And that includes any of the categories that are referenced from the entities that we searched. Um, so in this, this way, we don't have to make two requests. We don't have to get our recipes and then turn around and fetch all of our categories. Um, so there's only one included category here because both the two recipes that we got back were both main course recipes. So it only included uh, one of those entities. Cool, does that all make sense so far? I think we're pretty, pretty basic, which is why I labeled this basic. Um, so now we're gonna talk about authentication. This is one of the things that was really, really scary for me. There's a number of different ways you can authenticate with an API. Um, the example we're gonna use right now is OAuth. Um, so the general idea with OAuth is you have a specific endpoint that will um, return tokens, like an access token. Uh, in this case, it's OAuth slash token. And this stuff pretty much works out of the box um, when you install Contenta. I think you have to, you have to upload um, a public and private key, but that's generally about it. Um, so we can see what we get back here. Um, actually, in the, we're actually doing a post now. We're not doing a get request. So we're posting uh, for a token. The grant type is password. The client ID, which is the UUID of a client, uh, the client secret, which is kind of like the, the client um, password. Username is admin, and here's my user1 password. Feel free if you want to try to hack my local content uh, environment and download recipes for grilled cheeses. Um, and then there's the scope, which is content administrator. I'm not really going to get too deep into this because there's a bunch of great resources uh, out this specifically for the simple OAuth module. Um, but this is what we need to send in order to get this token. So I sent that, I got this really long token back. Um, it expires in 300 seconds, um, which is what, five minutes? Um, so we have our access token and then we have our refresh token. Um, so five minutes, it's a pretty short period of time. Um, so this access token is gonna expire in five minutes. Um, and then after that, it's just not gonna be usable anymore. The refresh token has a much longer expiration date. So instead of having to send our password every time, we can just send a, a refresh token. Um, so I am going to copy this out switch over, and so the idea here, if you're building a JavaScript application, you would do your fetch for your token, and then you store that locally. Um, you're uh, an object in memory or local storage, something like that. And then when you need to get a new token, um, I'm sorry, I'll back up. Then once you post request, you just include that token and that'll give you access to do whatever, delete things, add things, edit things. Um, and then when you need to refresh, um, so five minutes has gone by, you know, it's been 10 minutes, and now you want to post a new recipe. Um, what you would do is send the refresh token that you saved. So in this case, let me replace that. I'll send that. And now I got a new token. And so this cycle just goes on you know, forever as long as you need it. Um, if, if you're past the refresh token uh, expiration date, then you have to go back and that's when, you know, if you're on a website and it's like, you've been logged out too long, you need your username and password, most likely the refresh token has expired. Um, 
Cool, so now let's actually post a recipe. So you see we have all our HTTP, HTTP methods here. Uh, so far we've just been looking at uh, gets in terms of entities, but now we're gonna post. So we include um, the accept and content type headers, it's JSON API. And you'll notice now that we have an authorization header. Um, I believe if I send this, it should get rejected. Yep, 403 forbidden, because this is the token that I sent earlier. Um, so if I go back to this response, if I haven't been talking for five minutes, this should work. Okay. So the general syntax, it's just a string, bearer with capital B, space, and then whatever your token is. And we'll send that, bummer. Try again. Oh, I don't think I copied the whole thing. There's better ways of doing this, especially hitting shift instead of caps lock. Um, I'll try this one more time. Okay, there we go. So we posted a grilled cheese. I guess I should have explained that um, with the post we're sending um, a JSON object in the body. Uh, this looks very similar to what we got back when we were trying to get a single resource. Um, so these are probably everything that somebody would have put in in a, like a form or whatever you're using to actually generate uh, the fields that you're um, sending up. Um, I'm not gonna get too deep into that. I do want to um, show the authorization options. So everything we've done so far was very manual. Uh, we were just copying and pasting those tokens. Um, if we change the authorization type, uh, we could just put in a bearer token. And if I paste that directly in there, Still copying and pasting. You know, we just posted another grilled cheese. Um, let me. Here's our Contenta site. We should have two grilled cheeses. We do. So it's working. It's it's posting data locally. Um, So there's quite a few authorization options in here. You can just do like basic auth, which is um, filling in your username and password, and it'll take that and it'll encode it um, into a string and you would send that. Uh, there is actually a built-in functionality for OAuth. Um, actually we want OAuth2. Um, and this is just another interface for actually um, getting that data. Um, I, haven't, I haven't found this really useful because it doesn't, it doesn't handle the refresh token. At least I haven't figured out how, how to get it to handle the refresh token. Um, so we'll look at other ways for handling that. Um, <clears throat> but you do have these options there. Um, another one I wanna po point out is inherent auth from parent. So we can actually set whatever our th authentication settings are on the parent request. So in this case, or I'm sorry, the parent, whatever you wanna call it, collection, I guess. Um, we can edit that and we could set the specific authorization settings here. Uh, so we'd update that. And now any, any request within this collection using, um, the type inherent auth from parent will actually use that. So you don't have to worry about setting it on every single request. Um, as you'll see in a little bit, you can get a lot of requests in a collection. Um, okay, now I wanna talk a little bit about variables. So Postman allows you to, to add variables in pretty much anywhere you can type a a string in Postman, you can replace it with a variable. Uh, it looks very similar to like twig syn syntax, the double curly braces. 
Um, and those variables have different scopes. So just like with our authentication, we had a collection that uh, was handling the authentication and we said inherit that um, from the parent. Uh, variables do that naturally. So you can have, there's five different scopes of variables in Postman. You have your global scope, which is, if you remember when I first started talking, I clicked on the Contenta workspace at the top. Uh, those are specific to the workspace. So if you switch workspaces, your global variables change. Um, and we have collections, which we were looking at the, um, we had a, a number of different collections. And then we have environments. So I haven't talked about environments yet, but I will in a second. But an environment is essentially just a group of variables that you can share across collections, across workspaces. Um, I typically use environment settings for like my development environments. So I'll have a group of settings, maybe um, specific passwords for my local environment, uh, like a different domain. Um, maybe my local is using HTTP, so I have a variable for that protocol where uh, our dev servers use an HTTPS. Uh, so you can have those, um, those environments, chunk, or those variables grouped together in environments, and then when you run a request, you specify which environment you want to run. Um, and then you have local, local variables, which we'll um, get into that. Those are specific to scripts. Um, we'll talk more about scripts. And then you have a data variable, and I hope to at least touch on this, um, but we'll talk about that in a bit when we get into running a collection. So you can run all your requests together. Um, data variables allow you to have a different set of variables each time you run that request. And I'll talk about some use cases for that. But it ends up, these various la layers of abstraction give you a lot of power in what you can do with Postman. So, um, real quick, simple variables. Um, here I've replaced the initial request with a protocol variable and a domain. And Postman has a lot of nice, um, like UI touches in it. So if I hover over a variable that I've typed in, um, it'll say whether or not, it'll tell you what scope it's coming from. So in this case, um, the value of this variable is con contenta.test and the scope is environment. Um, and if I screw up the name, it actually, I don't know if you can see, but it turns red. So it's simple to use, npm install newman-g, uh, so install it globally, it's a node package. Um, and then you can run your collection. So newman run, postman echo, this is just an example from the site, and you can see it runs through all that stuff. Um, just to give you an example of what we just did. So I saved these, um, my collection and my environment outs. Um, and I did that by just going here, clicking export, saves it as a JSON file. Um, same with the environment. Uh, you can go in and edit it, save it as a JSON file. And then in the command line, just type Newman run, you give it the collection file that you want to run. Uh, in this case, I want to run it with a specific environment. So you just uh, pass it the E flag for environment. And if I run that, let's see, and it just ran all the, the tests that I had. Um, so it's super, super powerful, super easy to use. Um, and there's a bunch more. Um, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface, or surface with, with Postman. Um, everything you've seen here is all part of the free tool. Uh, obviously, they need to make money. They have um, uh, pro-level features. Uh, one of the main things there is sharing things with the team. Like I said, you can, you can export a collection to um, get and share it. 
But if you have the pro version, you can actually share workspaces and all that stuff's you know, stored in the cloud so everybody on your uh, development team uh, can work with it. Um, what other things are there? Uh, you can run monitors super easy. So if you've ever used something like Pingdom that's just, you know, every so often it'll, it'll ping a site to see that it's getting a 200 or whatever test, you can run a whole collection with a monitor um, tool. Um, and you'll get reporting back on that. So I set that up for one of our client sites. Um, it just pings their site and lets me know, yeah, it's, it's up every five minutes or so. Um, that's something that if you get the, if you pony up for a pro subscription, um, you get more of those monitors, like you get more um, executions. You're limited by the free account. Um, I recently used this, I uh, wrote a collection for actually doing a, uh, like a very basic migration. So we have a client site um, that has an event management system. Um, it's, a, it's an older system, it has like a pretty basic XML feed for all their events. Uh, I was able to take that, convert it into JSON and turn it into one of those data collections. And my migration script from a Postman perspective was essentially just one, it was like an authentication request to authenticate with the server, and then a post request. And that looped through all the different, um, all the different entity types. And because I was using JSON API, and it had a standard, like Drupal has a standard for, you know, what those endpoints should look like, I was able to figure out from the data, you know, what URL to post to, and was able to migrate like 700 events um, fairly quickly. And for me, being a, a front-end guy who hasn't written a, or written a migration myself, I was, I was pretty damn proud of myself for doing that. Uh, may not be the most efficient way, but it worked, and um, the client was really happy with the result. Uh, so there's a lot of other things. I'm, I'm sure I've missed a ton. Um, but with that, say thanks. Um, definitely have a couple minutes for questions. I do also want to say that we're, we're hiring developers right now. So if any of this stuff looks interesting to you, uh, come talk to myself. Or come talk to Joel and Nat and Shirt um, down there. We'd love to talk to you. I think we're doing um, really fun work. I'm always excited about the stuff we're working on. We get to work with some amazing clients. So yeah, come talk to me. And if you have any questions, please step up to the mic. I do also have, um, I don't work for Postman. I'm just a big fanboy. <laughs> Um, it's been really helpful for, for me, so I reached out to them and asked them if I could use some of their assets, and um, they actually sent a bunch of stickers, and they're really nice stickers, if that's your thing. Um, so come up and see me. Uh, come visit us at the booth. Right. But I'd love to answer some questions if anyone has any. These, like these right here? Uh, the, you said you could export collections and, and the scripts. Like something that could be just extended or forked and then customized. Or something. Yeah, well, I definitely, I've exported all the collections here as part of um, my slides. So they're, they're up on GitHub, and I'll post a link to that. Um, but I could definitely post the collection for, um, like I've got one that just creates a ton of entities and one that deletes a bunch. Um, cool. Yeah, happy to do that. Anything else? Somebody's got to have a question. Nope. Well, all right. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs>